welcome. My name is Rachel and today I wanted to just spend some time providing comfort, providing a place of comfort for when your heart hurts and I thought about making this video a little while ago I think that it's quite difficult when your calling is to love people to love to become discouraged other people let us down and that doesn't mean that we need to stop loving others it doesn't need, mean that we need to stop caring for others it doesn't even necessarily mean enforce stricter boundaries just means that sometimes we need a time out sometimes we just need to relax to regroup and to remind ourselves that Our calling in life is to love, to love other people, to serve, and sometimes it means that we'll get hurt. I was thinking the other day about time with relatives who don't necessarily like us or friends who don't really you know want to spend time with us uh, when for example you you love those people because you've been blessed with them in your family you've been blessed with them in your circles but you know for one reason or another they just aren't interested and I was thinking you know maybe maybe it means that I need to set more boundaries or just let them go and do their own thing maybe 
maybe I just need to, you know, turn my back on them, but, you know, I think that ultimately we're called to love, and sometimes that means giving love freely, even when it isn't necessarily appreciated as well. recently welcomed our first child and you know it's interesting to see how we're invited to things that we previously wouldn't have been invited to but you know that it's just because they want to see your child not because they, they suddenly want to see you and it's so easy to become hurt and to become discouraged and that might not be the only context you know, sometimes there are friends that we want to invest in, friends that we want to keep but they just don't want to return the friendship sometimes it's co-workers, sometimes it's romantic You know, I think that our biggest mistake, our biggest mistake in this life, is placing our worth in who loves us, in who reciprocates our friendship, in who gives back to us, and that is not the we are all, we're all selfish, we're all sinful, we're all broken and fallen and struggling and it is unfair of us to hold expectations of that magnitude for other people now let me explain if we, for example want to find love want to find meaning in life and we think that a romantic partner will give us that that is unfair if we want to feel loved if we want to find a sense of self-worth by receiving love from someone else or from being respected or pursued by someone else then that is not fair there is only one person who can who can give us meaning there is only one person who can satisfy our hearts and that is not our sibling or our romantic partner or our spouse or our parents it is our heavenly father and you know whether you're Christian or not I'd like you to think for a a moment have I ever truly found worth in another person have I ever truly found a secure identity in how another person responded to my love or how another person treated me I know when I was when I was younger, I say that as though I'm a hundred years old or something, but you know, when I was in uni or whatever, I would, you know, desperately throw myself at friendships, at 
any bloke who showed interest in me because I wanted to feel loved. I wanted to feel accepted. I wanted to feel appreciated and I was looking for that in an area where I would not find it. It took me a while to realize that even if you do find a really good spouse, they're not going to give you the sense of identity and belonging that you want. They're still going to mess up, they're still going to leave your heart feeling empty. And that's okay, because it's not about what we can get out of other people in life. It's about what we can give to other people. And I think that it is impossible to truly give love unless we have the perfect source of love, which is Jesus. Because worldly standards tell us that we should get something. Worldly standards tell us that we deserve something from other people. My worldly mind tells me that I should boycott relatives who don't, you know, choose to prioritize me or spend time with me, that I should just give up on them and stop showing them love and just leave them to do their own thing. But God's standards tell me that that's not how life works. I wrote down some Bible verses for us. I made a note at the top and it says when we try to fill our hearts with worldly things that is when our hearts hurt the most because we've all got this this hole in our hearts this longing in our hearts and we try to fill it with everything with food, with games, with work, with romantic interests, with family, and those things might fill that hole for a little while, but ultimately we're still left with that hole, with that thirst for something else, for something that's going to make us full. In John chapter 7, verse 37, Jesus said, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And that, all those verses about, come to me, O oh, who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Rest, come to me, anyone who is thirsty, and drink. I didn't understand those, but just recently it clicked for me. And when he's saying, you know, come to me, anyone who is thirsty, what he means is, come to me, anyone who is craving something. If you feel that emptiness, if you feel that heaviness, if you feel let down, if you feel abandoned, by the world, if you feel like your friends have left you, like there's just no place for you, you have no belonging, whenever we feel that emptiness, that heaviness, that yearning in your heart, that is what Jesus is talking about. When we feel that thirst for anything, we should come 
to him and he will quench our thirst. He will give us rivers of living water when we truly come to him and we ask him to quench our thirst. And what does that look like? Well, you know, if you're already a Christian, that might look like, you know, when you're really, your heart's really hurting and you're, you're yearning for those things. That could look like watching a Christian video. It could look like spending time in prayer. It could look like curling up and reading God's word and just, you know, sitting in a place of silence, in a place of presence, you know, just being there and asking God to rest with you. And that could be what it is. And if you're not a Christian, you know, that could look like inviting Jesus into your heart and asking him to forgive you of your sins. It could even just look like, you know, researching who Jesus is, you know, digging deeper into that. If you decide that that is, you know, something that might help. Um, and, you know, even when we do those things, even when we, we lean further into Jesus, it's not a guarantee that we're going to feel good. It's not a guarantee that our lives are going to be perfect. Jesus said that in this world, you'll have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world in John 16 verse 33. And what he mean, means by that is, in this world, we're going to feel bad sometimes. In this world, things might hurt. In this world, we're going to be let down by humans. Things are going to go wrong. Bad things are going to happen because we live in a fallen and broken world. But we can be encouraged because Jesus died. Jesus died to overcome this world so that we know that no matter what happens to us, we have hope in him. If we have accepted him in our hearts and agreed to serve him and love him, then man can do nothing to us. No matter how much hurt we feel, we can have hope because Jesus has saved us. And no matter what happens in this world, we will ultimately be with him. We will find peace and rest in his presence. that you if not relaxed at least encouraged in this life in this world people will let us down bad things will happen we will feel lost and confused and that's okay but there is hope in Jesus who tells us that the command the law is fulfilled when we love our neighbours as ourselves when we do unto others as we would have them do unto us when we choose to continue putting other people even when it hurts. No, I think I might call this video ASMR for when people let you down. Because I think that's that's what was on my mind. Writing those verses and planning this.
I pray that you're encouraged and for the rest of our time together I'm just going to hang out around you trying not to hurt your ears and you can use this time to just sit you can use it to pray focus on the Lord. You know, praying doesn't always have to include words. It can just be sitting there in silence, welcoming the Lord, sitting in his presence and spending time with him.